Hello all, in this video I'll be discussing about data transfer to a zinc based board over Ethernet when the processor is running standalone operating system. If you are running Linux, there is direct support for uh, Ethernet. You don't have to worry about anything. But standalone, we may have to use an additional library for uh, doing it. Now in many of the previous videos, we had to transfer some large amount of data to the port. Most cases I used XCT console, which uses JTAG interface for data transfer, and some cases UART was also used. Both interfaces they are quite slow, and also they are they are quite useful to transfer from your computer to the board DDR. But for transferring from DDR to your computer, you may have to use some other thing like the memory dump utility. But if we can use Ethernet for that, uh, the interface is quite fast and you will be also able to do bidirectional communication very efficiently. So that's why we are going to look at it. So this particular example, again, my intention is to transfer some data to DDR, process it a little bit in software and send the result back. So essentially, I'm not using any logic in PL. All the processing is done in software. But for, for uh, starting the project, I require the XSA file. So only for that, I have a, a simple Vivado design. I'm using, again, Zybo Z7 board. That's why I'm going through Vivado to get the XSA file. If you are using Z board and if you have only software-based processing, the XSA is directly available in YTS. You don't have to go through it. Anyway, so here I have generated a, a small processor and I simply connected the clocks here and I have exported my XSA and I already have my XSA file here. And now I will start with my Vitus project. So as usual, we start as a application project. And like I said before, if you are using Z or any of these uh, Silix development boards, you can directly choose it from here provided you don't have any logic in your PL part. So I'll use my XSA file here. And at this stage, unlike an empty application, I'll be uh, choosing this option, LWIP Echo Server. Okay, so this LWIP, it's a library uh, which is used for lightweight internet protocol communication. So we'll be using this library for ethernet communication. Okay, so again, there are multiple examples here. Echo Server is there, then TCP client server is there, LWIP UDP client server is there. We can start with any of them, maybe this is the easiest one, echo server. That means our board will be acting as a server and our computer will be acting as a client. Okay, so that's what I am starting with. Again, later uh, you need not always start with an example. Once you get an idea how to do it, we'll be able to add this library from our BSP and you should be directly added to your project. Okay, but this might be the best place to start this plan with. And when you connect your computer to the FPGA board, again, you have two options. You may use an Ethernet cable and do a point-to-point -point connection between your computer and the board, or you can connect through a switch. In my case, I am using a point-to-point -point connection. So that will have some implication depending upon how you connect it, uh, whether you need to do some IP configuration in your computer or not, it depends. So in my case, it is point-to-point -point connection. Okay, I don't have any switch in between. Okay, so we'll finish it. Now while it brings the uh, source code up, we will discuss the IP related thing, IP address basically. So in this example code, what happens when the system starts up, uh, it will be doing a DHCP, dynamic host configuration protocol. And if you have a switch, uh, in your system, 
the IP address to your board as well as to your computer will be assigned by the switch. So you don't have to worry any, anything about the IP address. But in case you are connecting it point to point, your computer as well as your board, they should be in the same subnet. Okay, so you will have to manually configure the IP address of your computer to a static IP address. Now, in the absence of DHCP, the default IP address used here in the example is 192.168.1.10. So this is the default IP. So your computer should be also having IP like 192.168.1. Something it should be in that format. Okay. So in Windows, Windows 10. you can do it from your uh, control panel network and internet network connection you can configure it there linux also you can configure a static ip so here if you see i have configured it to be 192.168.1.3 okay it can be anything other than 10 and the default gateway here it is 192.168.1.1. So keep the same thing, same as uh, the board as well as the subnet mask also. Okay, keep them same. That is one point. Okay, so once it comes up, we compile it and here and in the settings uh, again I don't have any PL logic so it is fine to reset the entire system no issue with that and we run it so on the terminal you can see what is going to happen first of all you should be able to see uh, this file auto negotiation and it will set some speed okay in my case it is 1000 uh, mbps and after that here you can see dhcp timeout so because of that it is using the default ip address and it says like tcp echo server started at port 7 so first of all you should get this output if this output is not coming properly, either there is something wrong in your connection or in the IP configuration. Okay, so make sure this much is coming and you can also do a ping operation. Nine two one six eight one dot ten and the board should be replaced. Okay, so this shows like everything is good. So now we will start our modification. So here in the main code, okay, it does all the initial configuration. Again, we don't have to worry about this. After that, it calls a start application function, which will be doing some basic configuration. So later we will be modifying them, uh, whatever is under start application. After that, it keeps the code in an infinite loop. That's it. So yeah, so if you don't want echo server, you may comment this thing out, uh, comment both of them out actually, and just keep the timers inside the while loop. Now, if you go to start application, this is a function which is being called. So there it creates, uh, similar to our port programming, it creates a structure which is representing a TCP connection. And it does the binding, uh, everything is fine. So again, we can always keep all these function. Now here, you will see a function called the TCP accept and PCB accept callback. Again, the first one is the uh, structure pointer, which is representing the connection or the IP type, we can say. The second one is a callback function. It is similar to an interrupt service routine. So this interrupt service routine will be called whenever 
our server accepts a new client from the new connection from the client in our case server is the fpga board client is my computer so whenever it accepts a new tcp ip connection from a computer this function will be called okay so at uh, at the at the initialization start application is being called so it will directly come here and it will execute this function then it is printing tcp echo server started at port 7 print you are seeing here so inside this function if you see it is basically uh, has a variable to count the number of connections again not very interesting uh, here you will see another function tcp receive okay so this is important so this function called basically links again the connection with the receive callback so receive callback is again another callback function similar to a interrupt service routine which will be called whenever the server receives some data or some packets from the client so this function basically hooks the callback function with the connection so whenever some data is received from the client this function will be automatically called and again since this is an echo server you can see what is happening in receive callback so yeah receive callback is called whenever some packet is received so first of all it it, it makes sure like whatever received is a valid packet it is not a null packet and here it it takes that packet or basically the content of that packet p load p pointer payload that will give the content of the received packet p pointer length is the length of the received packet so basically the received data it is writing to a tcp buffer so this function tcp write will write some data to a buffer and subsequently that buffer will be sent out as packet okay that buffer can be sent out as a single packet or multiple packet that's all up to the driver and hardware but whatever you store in the buffer using this function will be eventually sent out so in case of a uh, what do you say echo server idea is quite simple get some packet write it back and send it out so it acts like an echoing operation so that's all here so now what we'll do we'll be modifying this echo.c okay so i will put the code there then explain so start application there is no change everything remains same so under tcp accept in the original code there was a function tcp receive which was linking the receive callback with the connection now here i also have tcp sent okay both tcp receive and tcp send they are part of the lwip we are not writing them so what tcp send does is it links the send callback isr with the connection so receive callback is uh, called whenever the server gets any packet from a client send callback will be again called whenever any data sent by the server is received by the or reaches the client when that happens this callback function will be called okay? because in my case i need to get some data i simply don't want to echo it back i want to send send some uh, different data okay that's why i'll be using send callback what is happening there we will see later so this is the only change here addition of this function now in receive callback let's see what is going to happen so my idea is i'll be sending an image from my computer to the board that received image will be stored in a buffer okay so that buffer is basically inside ddr so i have declared a buffer here image buffer you can see i am going to send an image with size 512 times 512 since again this is just for demo everything is hard coded you can parameterize it or you can even use dynamic memory allocation no issue with that so whatever image i am going to receive i will be initially storing it in this buffer again i won't be getting the entire image in a single packet it will be coming over multiple packets so as i get packets i will be filling this buffer once i get the entire image 
I'll be doing some image processing. So the processing I am doing is quite simple. Find the negative of the image. Take each pixel from the image, subtract it from 255. That's the operation I'm doing. Now that processed image will be stored in a different buffer here, which is called this process image buffer. And once I process the entire image, I'll be sending this processed image back to my client. Okay, that's the basic idea. So in receive callback function, uh, here you can see, till here, everything is same as the original code. At this point, whatever data I am getting uh, through the packet, I am copying it into this buffer pointer. Buffer pointer is nothing but, uh, it is initialized to image buffer, but as we get more and more data, that buffer pointer will be incremented by the size of the packet. Same way I have another variable called i, which is keeping track of how much data I have received. Again, declared as static, so that uh, it doesn't get initialized to zero each time we get a new packet. Okay, so whenever I get a new packet, I will be incremented by the size of the packet. Okay, so we'll be getting uh, packets again and again. At some point, i will become same as my expected image size. So once it becomes same as my expected image size, here you can see I take uh, pixel by pixel from the image buffer, subtract it from 255 and store it in the processed image buffer. And simply will print like image received, image processed, once it receives and processes the image. Once it is uh, done with processing, it will make this processing done signal high, which is a global variable. And this is used for synchronization between receive callback and run send callback. We will see it later. And at the end, there is a send callback function. Again, uh, why it is there, I will explain later. So basically, we get data, we store it in a buffer. Once we get the entire image, we process it, store it in another buffer, and make processing done signal high. That's it. That's in the receive callback. Now, in the send callback, you can see. Nothing happens until this processing done signal become high. So processing done basically indicates processed image is available in the proc image buffer. So again, what it does, it takes a part of the processed image and sends it to the client. Now how much data you can send in one shot is decided by this TCP send buffer. Again, that is part of the library. Uh, by default, its size is 8K. It doesn't mean one packet size is 8K. What is the packet size is, again, uh, driver dependent and hardware dependent. And of course, Ethernet protocol mandates what's the maximum packet size, everything. So that is uh, its headache. We don't have to worry about it. But at any time, you should not try to write more than 8K to the TCP send buffer. So that is what is being done here. Uh, we are basically checking whether the remaining data to be sent is greater than or equal to this one. If it is greater than or equal to this one, we will send only 8K. If it is uh, less than that, we will send only whatever data is remaining. Okay, so in basically in a loop, we are sending data, but you cannot see any loop explicitly here. Because like I said before, we will be sending some data. Once that data is received at the client, this function will be automatically called again, kind of interrupt service routine. So client receives a packet, it calls again. So when it is being called again, we will check again, any data is left. If some data is left, we will send that. So the process keeps on going. So the process keeps on going until uh, the send size becomes same as image size. So once that happens, that means we have sent the entire image, it will simply print processed image send and it will make this processing done signal back to zero. Okay, so that's how the synchronization happens between send callback and receive callback. It makes it zero, send size back to zero and initialize the buffer pointer to the beginning of the processed image buffer. Now, only catch here is the send callback function is called only when our client receive some data, right? 
So how does it receive the first packet? Because here we have a chick chicken and egg problem. We are sending data only when send callback is called. And uh, without sending the first data, nobody is going to call this. Okay, so we need to somehow force the first data packet out. That is why this send callback is used uh, inside the receive callback here. So once the processing is done, receive callback will call send callback one, which will trigger the first data transfer. And once the first data gets out, the client receives it, and uh, this callback will be called again, and the process goes on. No issue with that. Now we will look at the code used on the client side, basically on our computer. It's a simple Python script uh, based port programming for sending some data. So here again, you can look at the document of socket library, what is happening. So we basically need the IP address of the server as well as the port number seven, because that is where uh, the server is running, okay. So when I run this script, it will simply print a message client. And if you type uh, quit, the program will exit. Otherwise, it will be reading a binary file. So this is a binary image file of Lena. Again, in the previous videos, I have shown the open CV script, like, like this prepare image.py, which is used for converting BMP or JPEG image into raw image. So we need raw data actually. So it takes the raw data and sends it. And once it sends the entire image, it will simply print uh, sent image uh, data. Now it goes to a while loop and waits for data from the server. Okay. And once it gets 512 times 512, which is the processed image, it will exit from the while loop. And whenever it gets some data from the server, it will be storing that uh, data in another binary file called the lena negative dot row. And once it finishes receiving it, we can run another OpenCV script here, which will take that row image and display it to us. That's the basic idea. Okay, so we will test it. So I have recompiled my code. Okay, now I will run my client here. Okay, we'll simply type send. Anything other than quit will do. Okay, I haven't generated the raw file yet. So first let's do that. Prepare image.py. Now I have the raw image. Okay, so we will run again. Client.py. Okay, send. Okay, so image received, image process, processed image sent here. Send image data, processed image received. So now I can quit from here. And here you can see we have received this one. Lena negative dot row, which is a binary file. So I will run my Python script, show image with Lena. If you run with Lena gray, you can see the input image. This is what we send actually. So, then a negative, this is what we receive. Okay, so here you can see it is the negative of the image. So next time when you want to add this to your project, you don't have to start with that example project. What you can do is you can go to a, system project and from board support package
you can enable LWIP. Here it is enabled by default because we started with an example project. Otherwise, you can simply enable it and it will add all the required header file. Uh, you may have to add these things to your main as well as uh, whatever is here in the echo.c to your source code to get it working. Again, almost every Z port, the Ethernet connection by default is to the PS part. Okay, so whatever I discussed is applicable when you want to connect with the Ethernet controller in the PS. There are very few boards where an Ethernet connection is available to PL also. There also you may use LWIP, but we might have to make certain modification. Okay, that we can discuss in another video how to do it with the PL Ethernet connection. Okay, thank you.